Hey everyone, Freak here back again with another video about Runes Reforge. This time we're going to be talking about this precision tree specifically. We're going to be doing one tree at a time so that I can keep myself a bit more constrained and hope these videos are a bit shorter and more digestible. If you don't know who I am, I am a diamond level bot lane main, uh, overall League of Legends and math enthusiast. Uh, so far, about four or five days into the patch, I've gotten up to level 35. I know some have played more than me, but I'm trying to do my best to keep up with the game, and it's going to be a lot of fun to keep up with what's all going on here. So let's talk about specifically the precision tree, all right? And we're just going to open up a new page, and we're going to open up a precision tree, and we got to pick one. No, we don't have to pick one yet. Okay, great. So uh, the precision tree, when you pick it, it gives you 18% bonus attacks when picking your secondary path. Whatever it ends up being doesn't matter. It's 18% no matter what. And that's good because that's very useful for any auto attackers for very obvious reasons. Um, almost all of the marksmen that play in the bot lane, aside from very special cases like Jin and Ezreal, because they have, well, Jin is not much of an attacker or an auto attacker, though he can be okay with fleet footwork. Um, and Ezreal has something called kleptomancy. Uh, but pretty much everyone else in the bot lane in the conventional marksman role is going to want to run precision because attack speed is a really good stat for them. It's a little bit underpriced attack speed, so the 18% attack speed is kind of more than 450 gold worth, and also gives you access to some really other good efficient stats uh, down the line. Uh, there's a couple of other good uh, precision users. Yasuo is a great example for this, uh, but really the main thing to keep in mind is the stats are usually not what's going to drive your choice. The keystone is going to drive your choice uh, by a long shot. And what's sad right now is, is in 7.22, based on what I've seen and based on what other people have seen, lethal tempo is hot garbage. Uh, lethal tempo in basically every possible scenario is just worse than press the attack. Um, quick shout out to uh, Prototype, uh, North American AD carry player, collegiate champion who did uh, some, not theory crafting, but he basically fought target dummies on a couple of different champions and in all cases pressed the attack out damage lethal tempo. And that was in a literal AFK 1v1 where he just sat there and dealt damage. And keep in mind that press the attack actually gives you a damage amp afterwards as well. When you hit someone, you do some, some big chunk of damage. Then you get 12% more damage for six seconds straight, uh, which generally speaking is not always better than 30 to 80% attack speed uh, for up to six seconds. But uh, keep in mind that lethal tempo that goes on cooldown and then you can just reapply press the attack. And, and basically just what it comes down to, trust me, press attack is always better than lethal tempo. So just basically never run lethal tempo. Even though we've seen people think about champions like Kogma and Vayne and Twitch and think about how good they'd be with lethal tempo, it doesn't matter, press the attack is better. Uh, so I would expect to see lethal tempo, I would expect to see lethal tempo get buffed at a certain point. Maybe press the attack to get nerfed at a certain point, though probably not by that much because it's not really overpowered, just lethal tempo sucks. And fleet fork, feet, sorry, my brain is not working or my, my mouth isn't. Uh, fleet footwork is not bad. It is not amazing. It's not stellar. It's not super sexy. Uh, but the movement speed lasts for a full one second and 30% is pretty high. Uh, the heal is not insane, but decent. I mean, you think about a, a very late game build with like 110 bonus attack damage on it. And it's only a heal for like... 65 HP, like it's certainly not a lot, it is not certainly what old warlords healed you for uh, by any means, but it is still a solid 30% movement speed buff, which is actually pretty reasonable. Um, also, the fact that it includes an uh, ability power ratio helps a bit so that certain mages with really bad laning phases or really weak laning phases could consider it as well. Maybe you think about something like AP Teemo, though I don't suggest doing this with AP Teemo. Uh, those are the kind of things that are available. Uh, by and large, though, anyone who's going to be running the Precision Tree is either an attack speed-based fighter, like you're playing Yasuo, uh, or you're playing a bot lane marksman, in which case, in almost all these cases, you're going to press the attack, with a few exceptions. Great, there's your keystone options right now. We don't seem to have a lot of science there. Um, just that this is based on balance and numbers. I would expect at a certain point uh, when things get more balanced and, and things get buffed and nerfed, uh, we'll start seeing Lethal Temple be really good on champions like Sivir who have a hard time hitting the same champion three times and would instead just like to get ricochets out faster and, and, and whatnot. So Lethal Temple will eventually be good. Uh, there are also some fun um, side benefits to Lethal Tempo. For example, if you're sieging a turret or something, uh, let's say, and you, you're playing Varus, and you Q poke someone and you snipe them, you walk back, drop turret aggro, and then you have three seconds of attack speed to hit the turret with, which is actually not too bad. 
Uh, so there are occasional synergies here, just right now the power level is not quite there for Lethal Tempo, but uh, this actually gives you some PvE power. In fact, uh, in games where I've been playing Sivir, you know, you hit Ricochet, you hit down the minion line, of course you're just doing really, really short trades, you would never trigger, press the attack at all anyway, and you get some attack speeds that now you can hit the minion wave a bit faster. And sometimes that can matter as well, it can help you last hit because you boomerang blade someone as you're trying to last hit under turret, and now you can you can race the turret shots with attack speed. So there's, again, there's some upside here that, that you know, you're not going to get with press the attack, but again, the number is just not good enough. Okay, we're done with that one. We're done with the keystone. Uh, presence of mind, triumph, and overheal. So overheal right now doesn't seem to have a great user. Um, I think overheal can be good when you are landing alongside like a Sona or a Nami or something. Also, I guess theoretically this could be good. Um, in fact, like you look at the numbers, right? And Because you only get one third value for self-healing, but you get 3x value from allies. Um, this really is the kind of situation where, like, when a redemption's coming down, or when you've got Font of Life on a teammate, or you're playing alongside a, a Soraka or a Sona or something, then overheal can be good. Um, but right now, I just feel like the situations are a bit too contrived to make overheal a generally good pick. And in general, if you're just going to make a rune page and then forget about it, you're probably not going to run overheal. I, I don't really know if overheal is worth running, even if you do have a healing teammate. By and large, it's overshadowed heavily by Triumph. And I want to point out that Triumph is probably only actually good in solo queue in normal games. I don't think Triumph is actually really that good in professional play because you just have many, many less kills in pro play. Uh, that said, maybe I'm underrating it and Triumph is actually better in pro play than, than I'm going to give it at first, at first glance. Uh, but Triumph, on pretty much everything I've seen statistically, Triumph is by far, by far the best rune in this slot in Precision. And it's not even close. Triumph smashes everything. Um, it's like an auto choose. It's almost really, almost always an auto select. Uh, the one thing you can choose instead of it is Presence of Mind, which is, can be really compelling in very specific scenarios. So for five seconds after leveling up or getting any kill or assist, you get free mana. Free mana for five seconds. Um, one of the big winners on this could be Cassidy. Cassidy could be a big winner here because Cassidy gets into a team fight, fights for a while, he gets a killer assist, and suddenly Rift Walk is free for five seconds. Oh boy. And if he has Ultimate Hat and he's got max CDR, I mean, it's like a 1.2 second cooldown or something on Rift Walk. Maybe it's shorter. I don't know Cassidy that well. So you just get like four free max stack Rift Walks. Like, that's actually insane. Which means you probably just kill the next champion because you rift walk on him four times. Oh god, it's disgusting. Now, in the average case though, keep in mind, this requires you to be snowballing a bit. This requires your team to be ahead a little bit so that you can get that first kill and then keep rift walking without dying. So the funny thing is, if you're getting resets on Cassidin, you have a you might have a Merlinomicon. Maybe, probably not, but you might. And you might have Triumph, which means you have the health to go in and do more. So, right, you're seeing that these two things are kind of at odds because you either have free mana for a few seconds or you heal. And both of these can help you keep going in a fight, but the average case tends to be that Triumph is still better, which is too bad because the dream is really sexy um, for Presence of Mind, but uh, statistically, statistically, Cassidy is still actually better off running Triumph than Presence of Mind. Uh, one other thing I've seen, which can be interesting with Presence, is uh, we're going to go back to Sivir in the bot lane. Or any champion that has mana issues, but wants to hard push. So, like, even Lissandra could be this a little bit, although Lissandra doesn't have mana issues once she has, like, two or three items. Uh, that's still kind of a long way to go. And so Presence of Mind basically lets you throw down your entire, you know, set of abilities every level up, which is, I mean, going to be your first six levels in lane. And, I mean, it's worth pointing out, really, that, like, uh, this is going to be a bit of an aside, but I want to talk about this. Right, a lot of champions in the old runes and masteries ran things like the two health per five in the resolve tree. They would run regeneration quints for a certain bad matchups top lane. They would always run flat armor instead of scaling armor uh, or scaling health in any like anti-physical matchup. People already are willing to take big late game hits to make their early game better. This is not a new reality. And keep in mind that um, mid laners and top laners hit level 6 by about 6 minutes. And bot laners hit level 6 by about 7 to 8 minutes. And so you've got 5 level ups or more in the first like 7 minutes of the game to use Presence of Mind. 
which means you've got five level ups to use your entire ability, like set of abilities before recalling um, and not using mana on it. So if you're playing Sivir, you get a free Ricochet and a free Boomerang Blade, which is like 120-ish mana up to 140 or 150 or 160 mana um, if you're like level nine when this happens. But by that point, you're like getting close to Essence Reaver, so it stops mattering. But because we already know people are willing to take early game runes, Presence of Mind is not innately a trap on champions that want to auto push but don't have the mana to do it tristan is another example of someone who just like might want to hit explosive charge and just push a minion wave because she wants to get a recall like you know there are times where this really makes sense uh you think about playing maybe sona and presence of mind lets you hit all your buttons real quick when you hit level three because sona's spells are insanely expensive they're insanely insanely expensive and so uh this you know could theoretically have value on support as well for early landing phases because you really can run out of mana in early laning phases. Um, and if you consider that this is, you know, two to three free spells five times in six minutes, I mean, it's, you know, a couple hundred mana a minute, which is, I mean, one and a half mana per second, right? If it's 90 mana per minute, that's really good mana regen. Like, just for the laning phase. And, like, this looks stupid on the tin, but if you actually are going to use the spells when you level up, this is, like, 7.5 MP5 just for the level ups. And that's when it actually matters, right? It stops mattering when you get later on in the game. So I don't think you should really underrate Presence of Mind. Uh, when you start looking at the actual numbers of what this really means for output, it's actually a pretty big deal uh, for, you know, Nami to press W and E and save 112 mana or something, whatever that number is. Uh, that said, of course, again, Triumph is a very good generalist ability and pretty solid. And right now, Overheal, I'm pretty sure just doesn't have good situations for it yet. We'll be able to see it at a certain point. Oh, also worth pointing out, by the way, I talk about supports grabbing Presence of Mind. There are no other good runes in uh, Precision at all for support. So sadly, none of this is good for support, so you'll never see them go for Presence of Mind because this is garbage and this is garbage for support. So unlucky. Maybe Zyre, but that's it. So I had like all the Nami's hopes up for like 20 seconds and then just killed them. Sorry about that. Um, supports can never go Precision Secondary or Primary. That's too bad. Um, Non-combat supports, not, not offense supports. Okay, uh, down we go into the next tree. The the Legend slot, Legend Alacrity, gives you up to 18% attack speed. Legend Tenacity gives you up to 20% tenacity. Legend Bloodline gives you up to 8% life steal. Spoiler alert, um, if you watch my part one of the video, I said Alacrity was the best, and it actually is based on stats so far. Based on what I've seen from publicly available statistics, Legend Alacrity is a big winner here. All the marksmen love this. It consistently wins more than Legend Bloodline on every marksman I have looked at so far. Um, now, again, you'd still want to have attack speed for this to matter at all, so I don't think Darius is running this. I mean, he's not going to run that either. Uh, certainly, some champions do want Legend Tenacity. If you're running a Darius or a Fior or something like this, you have a chance for it to be pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't do it on someone like Gangplank, but... There are a couple of decent options for non-marksmen to splash in the precision tree. Now, again, I wouldn't do it as a primary unless you're playing Yasuo. I don't think enough champions can make use of any of these keystones uh, compared to what they could do with, like, Summon Airy or Electrocute or something else. Um, so it's not worth, like, getting a third rune and forsaking a good keystone. It's just never worth it. Um, but Legend of Nasty has quite a couple of good users. So we've looked at... Uh, Basically, there's only two good keystones, press the attack, and then some for fleet footwork for bad landing phases, like, excuse me, like Vayne. Even Corky can do it decently. Uh, right now, Overheal has no really good users. Triumph is a clear winner, but I think Presence of Mind has some usage. Uh, right now, I think Legend Bloodline is just simply not as good as Legend Alacrity on anyone who would want lifesteal. If they want lifesteal, it means they want to auto-attack, which means they want to attack speed more. Um, but the Tenacity is still pretty good, and again, it it's good on the champions you'd think it would be good on. Right? It's good on Darius. It, it actually, uh, surprisingly enough, can be really good on tanks because tanks are in the front line absorbing a lot of CC and they can use like Tenacity Triumph and it's actually okay. It's actually okay. It's not that bad to be Tenacity Triumph Maokai. It's actually reasonable. Um, I'm not saying it's optimal, but it's actually reasonable. Um, so Tenacity is pretty good on a lot of champions, but again, if you're going primary, you're almost definitely going for Alacrity here. And, and uh, again, just I really want to reiterate, the users of Tenacity just make sense, right? A lot of the Juggernauts, Shivanas, and, and you know, Skarners and whatnot are going to make a lot of use out of that. And then finally, we have the final option here, which are all percent damage amps. 
do more damage to low health champions, do more damage to champions with more health than you, do more damage, do more damage when you're on low health. Um, I think it's very hard to want to opt into last stand. I don't feel like there's a ton of, uh, right? You have to be between 60, you have to be below 60% in the first place. You have to be doing battle at half HP. And the weird thing is that doesn't actually happen all that often. Like it, it just doesn't really. Um, I mean, you can have situations where like you try to trigger it with like Echo or Vladimir or something. And maybe these champions really do exist. I mean, I'm thinking of Trindomir and I didn't actually, to be fair, I didn't actually look up Trindomir statistics. So maybe this is actually a great rune for Trindomir because he's always going to be this injured and during his ultimate, he's got a ton of damage. And and I think he's probably still going Alacrity, by the way, and not Tenacity on Trindomir. Um, but last hand is, it, it's really hard to find good users for it. So I just, it's hard for me to really, uh, you know, suggest this to anyone. Talk about cut down. Uh, the breakpoint is only plus 150 health to do 4% more damage to them, and then it increases to 10% more damage when they have a lot more health than you. You know, for back in the world of Stone Plate Cho'Gath, and there you are. Um, do want to point out that by late game, a typical squishy goes up to about 1,900 to 2,000 health. Um, obviously, in the mid game, it's not there, but in the early game, no one has you know 500 more health than you. It's hard to you know it's hard to get some of these breakpoints early on. 4% more health, or 4% more damage is not a bad thing, of course. Um, so, you know, the 150 is not terribly hard to reach. But I want to point out um, that especially with the new changes, with the new runes coming out, uh, at level 18, Ari just already has more health than Yasuo or Zed. Like, mages actually have a lot of health now, or at least a bit more health now. They go up to the, they get up easily to the 2000s now, up almost 2100 in some cases, uh, which means... It is really hard for any solo laner to ever want cut down. Not only because, again, uh, mages have a lot more stats now, but also if you're a solo laner, it means you have more levels than everyone else, which means you have more health than them because you've leveled up more. It's basically impossible to use cut down in a solo lane. You should basically never use cut down in a solo lane. And we talked about how you pretty much never want to use last stand in a solo lane, and it means that if you're a solo laner, the only option you really ever have, your damage dealer is coup de gras. Um, it's just a very easy process of elimination. There's just there's just no point in anything else. It doesn't make any sense. This will never trigger against supports. It'll never trigger against the AD carry in the bot lane. It'll frequently never trigger against the jungler. Now, certainly to be fair, we are in a metagame full of Rengars and Kha'Zixes, um, right? No one's running around playing Zinderholt Gragas because it's not as fun as playing Rengar. Uh, so this is a little bit metagame dependent, to be completely fair. Um, and certainly, like, some people are doing, like, the Black Cleaver stacking build, which is a little cute as well. So there's, there's you know, some of these, like, pieces out there where cut down is correct. But really, this is this is not good in the general sense and only good sometimes in, in, in specific games. Uh, I think you can get into champ select and say, okay, they have Braum, you know, with the Tom Kench top lane. They're playing Gragas Jungle with Galio in the mid lane. Okay, yes, I will run this now on Tristana. Uh, but by and large, you just tend to feel like Coup de Gras just better in a lot of cases. Also, I want to point out one more thing. Don't be trapped. Um, if you're playing a support, uh, a damage support down here, you're probably getting a Sight Stone, which is 200 or more health on it. Like you're playing Zyra or Brand, right? And you're also probably going Riley's Leandries, which has another 600 health on it, which means you've now got 2,800 health on Zyra and suddenly cut down doesn't work against any of your applicable targets. Hmm... Not spicy anymore. Uh, so cut down again. Has a hard time finding targets. I think it can literally only be good on bot lane marksmen because they are under leveled and don't typically buy health items. I know it's it's a pretty small suite of champions that actually use cut down because it's just it's hard to have the least health on the team when you can just like this condition can be met. It can be met, but coup de gras I feel like is actually met a lot more often. And sure, a lot of the time you're fighting enemy champions, they do not have less than 40% health. It doesn't happen all that frequently. But it still happens enough to where I feel like if you're just going to make a rune page and then never think about it again, coup de gras just tends to be good. right? You don't even need the 10% damage amp to happen all the time because you can simply get a killer assist and then gain like 600, well not 600, 300 gold worth of stats. You can just simply get 300 gold worth of stats by showing up. And you only get it for 10 seconds, okay, sure, but that carries on to your next kill, and your next kill, and your next kill, and you can stack up a fair bit of damage, and then, you know, it, it just there's just enough power in Crew de Gras that it's just generally always good. 
And what that means is precision is not a very interesting tree right now. And this is based on number balance, right? I would expect a lot of these things to change. Like, I don't think Gudegrad needs the bonus stats. I think it's actually good enough on its own. Then you can start to see it actually have some real comparisons. I think Last Stand is, is very hard to make work. I would actually almost like to see you know, the number go up to like 80% or something where it's it's available in a lot more options. Heck, I would love Last Stand to exactly match up with um, Perfect Form where as soon as Perfect Form turns off, Last Stand turns on. And, and now you've got like a really cool, interesting thing going on where there, at least always one is activating, right? Um, I think definitely this is, again, this is the first patch. Um, I, I think Cut Down again is going to be hard to make use of outside of the roles I talked about. I think Last Stand, I think certainly needs more threshold. Uh, in my opinion, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's actually data out there that's proving me wrong. It just feels like there's not a lot of users, uh, not a lot of users, users. There's English. Uh, but that's what it comes down to. Uh, so what's funny is I basically made this page, right? And I looked at all these things that made the most sense. And then I looked at the default uh, precision tree. And it's literally this. Like if you just never do anything and just let the game pick your optimal runes, you get here and it's actually right like all the time. Again, there are, there is some there is some movement. Um, there is the dream case for presence of mind, but Triumph tends to win more even on Cassidy. There is very clearly some legend tenacity users, but honestly, Bloodline is just not as good as Alacrity right now, um, based on what I've seen. Even though Bloodline looks really enticing, it's just actually not just it's just not the way it is. And then Coup de Grace is just generally very good. It works all the time. It's hard to get wrong, and that right now seems to be a big thing with Runes Reforged is, uh, and it's kind of unfortunate, there's a lot of really cool situational effects. Like, I think Arcane Comet can be really good. But the problem is Arcane Comet is not as reliable as Aerie, so everyone just runs Aerie. And right now, it, it feels like basically the, ooh, this happens sometimes, happens too rarely. And the stuff that's always good, it's just always good. Um... And that's, that's where the balance is right now. I expect that to change, but as a 722, you pretty much, you have very few options other than what's shown right here on the screen in the precision tree. Um, I assume I'll revisit this in maybe 8.1 or something, or a little bit later, maybe once the, the LCS season starts, we see what pros start doing. But uh, based on what I've seen, based on what I've played with, and based on what I've seen with statistics, these are the best runes. That's going to do it for this video. Uh, part two will come in next, and then we'll go over the domination runes. Until next time, see ya.